everybody. Yeah, I'm gonna be testing these purple 18650s out of the harvest out of that crappy nine cell battery pack that could have burnt somebody's house down. You know, the battery pack that was very shoddy designed, um, even as far as to bypassing the fuse holder with a wire. Yeah, that one. Um, the sales, you know, I don't have anything against. Now, this one here had a little bitty spot on its wrapping where the wrapping had got cut. Probably during manufacturing of the um, pack. And when I was, when I was actually twisting the um, tabs off of these cells on this one, my pliers went over here and literally shorted it. A little puff of smoke come out. Not out of the cell, but the material over here. The cell is actually just fine, but this gives you an idea of how shoddy that pack was built. Now today I'm going to do, I'm going to consider doing this properly. Um, the best way I think to actually measure the capacity of your cells is, to, is by doing a discharge test on them. So here we have, um, I'm going to do the test on eight cells. These eight I plan on putting into some power banks like, let's see, like this one here. I bought, let's see, four of these on eBay for six dollars. Free shipping. They'll be here probably in February <laughs> because they came from, I think, Hong Kong. Um, yeah. I think these, you know, although they're they're rated for two thousand milliamp hours a piece, that'll give you a, that'll give you four thousand milliamp hour power bank. That's plenty to get your phone charged up in an event where you forget the charger or whatnot. As you see, they are sitting at four point one seven volts. Let's set the mode to discharge. I'm going to set the current to 1 amp. And we'll see how it does. This charger should, from what the manual says, this charger should discharge these down to like 2.8 volts. Which is a little on the low side, but that's okay for these cells. And we'll see exactly how much we get out of them. Okay, everybody, our discharge has finished, and it looks like we're doing pretty good. These batteries are actually rated for 2,000 milliamp hours according to their label, 3.7 volt, 7.4 watt hour. When you calculate this, it gives you roughly 2,000 milliamp hours. But through this discharge cycle, we actually got between 2171 and 2246, so very impressive, I think. And they're sitting at about 3. Point, between 3.3 .3 and 3.4 volts now. So, let's go ahead and run a charge cycle. Okay, these cells just finished charging. Let's see what they're at now. Have a look at that. Right around 2100 to 2200 milliamp hours. That's pretty impressive. Considering at least, from what I was able to find online, they were rated at 2000. I mean, when you do this calculation, but maybe perhaps these are 2200 milliamp hour cells. No real telling for sure, but. Pretty decent, I have to say. Um, let's see. 
Yeah, some are doing 2100, some are doing 2200. Kind of depends. Um, yeah, still very impressive though. So next I'll be doing the other four sales. There's actually nine total, but I got this one here set to the side. Um, I'm going to test the other four and see how they do. Okay, everybody, now I'm going to do the second set of batteries. Let's go ahead and pop these on the charger. Now, these have set for a couple of extra days. So I'll be curious to see how they do on a discharge test. See if they do as well as the other ones. They're all sitting at 4.15 to 4.16 volts. We'll discharge all four of them at one amp. Let's see how they do. Okay, everybody, these four cells have finished up and begin to bleed. These are actually 2200 milliamp hour cells. They, uh, 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 let's see, a uh, thousand milliamps, they roughly took two hours and 15 minutes or so, with the exception of this one here. They're sitting at 3.3 .3 volts roughly, a little higher. And you can see this one here is the lowest at 2156. And this is the highest at 2247. So I pretty, I pretty much would say these are actually 2200 milliamp hour cells. Which is pretty impressive. Despite coming out of such a crappy <laughs> replacement battery pack. Um, so one thing I've definitely noticed here is, you know, if you're looking for, if you're just looking for to get some, you know, decent enough 18650s for your flashlights or whatever that are actually decent capacity for what they are. Um, it looks like, you know, those um, cheap replacement laptop batteries are actually not a bad idea um, if you're looking to harvest some sales for really cheap. These are a whole lot better than Ultra Fire, Trust Fire, you know, X Fire, whatever you want to call it you know, whatever fire brands that are out there. Because um, a lot of those batteries are, are built very built very poorly and um, many of them um, are actually, yeah, <laughs> just, 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 do a, just do a search on YouTube and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, some of them are so poorly designed that they literally have smaller lithium ion batteries inside of an 18650 sized steel can. I kid you not. Yeah, there's there's ones out there that are like that, and some of these ultra fire batteries are <laughs> are recycled laptop batteries that have been relapped, or rewrapped rather, um, and pretty much none of them can put out the capacity that they're that they're actually like rated for, because some of them are rated for like capacities way over what an eighteen six fifty can put out these days. Like I think the highest capacity eighteen six fifty out there is like a thirty six hundred milliamp hour. Um, there are crappy um, ultra fire cells in the market out there that are rated for like 4,000 milliamp hour, and there's these other knockoff brand cells on eBay that are rated for like, you know, capacities like 6,000 milliamp hour or even 9,900 milliamp hours or so. Yeah, just, just absolutely crazy numbers. So it looks like you know the, these generic cells are not too bad. I mean, considering how cheap you can get these things on, on Amazon or eBay or wherever in these um, replacement battery packs for lap, for laptops. So next I'll go ahead and charge these up and see how much it puts in them. Okay guys, it appears I did not get footage after charging this second set of cells up, but I do believe it was very similar to how the first four behaved. So anyways, um, to go in this video, I'll go ahead and show you some testing I did to test the internal resistance of these cells. This particular uh, battery charger offers a feature called Quick Test, and you can use it to check the internal resistance of the battery cells. And these batteries did seem to fare pretty well. 
I have to say. Pretty impressed with them. So we're going in this video with a look at the internal resistance of the cells. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Hey everybody, I sure hope you guys enjoyed this video from Q Computer Channel. Remember to like the video, subscribe to Q Computer Channel for more updates, and remember to tick the bell so that we actually get notified of these updates. Did you know that I am also on a second channel that's CubeComp MTDX? Over there you'll find videos of bicycling, weather, elevators, and all sorts of other neat and interesting stuff. Feel free to subscribe to that channel as well. And again, I thank you for your support. And thanks for watching this video.